but the um a big part of the book as well is unlearning what we've learned through the education conveyor belt and the career conveyor belt because sometimes we don't realize how much we are being led by whatever is going on around us and by the path expected of us that when we want to break away and do something different like have a 10-year career or like not have to work in our 30s or our 40s or whenever we have to think in a different way to to access that kind of success and that kind of path so let's let's talk about the the unlearning part a little bit and i think a lot of listeners are in corporate america or they're trying to make the sh- shift into entrepreneurship um that that's a daunting process and i think it actually stems from our educational systems all the way through up it's like you kind of it was our educational systems build build us up to be factory workers and we sort of our factory workers in cubicles as we continue to go forward so what are some things that you think about when you are unlearning corporate america and then trying to make that shift into you own the equity the buck stops with you the um you know uh, everything is going to be accountable to you as the business owner i always think about my friend richard because we were having a conversation about why his training had slipped and why he felt like he couldn't go to the gym. And he told me that by the time he got home from work, he was really, really knackered and he got home at seven or eight, it was dark and he just wanted to eat and he wanted to go to bed and he wanted to watch TV. And his commute was like two or three hours a day because he lived in London and he went into an office in the middle of London. And so he, he focused in the morning, he had lunch with his, with his co-workers, he kind of had a few chats over the water cooler, he looked at the clock until it hit five and then he went and it was all this stuff that he was describing about how mundane his day was, which all sounds completely normal <laughs> until yeah. you realise that Richard owns the business, it's his business, he's created himself a prison and he's just living it and he's not questioning it at all and it sounds hilarious like it sounds like oh this is crazy who's this Richard guy but like we all do it to some extent and whether it's just we work on the weekdays and we don't work on the weekends or we clock on at nine and we clock off at five there's there's these patterns that we've just become accustomed to that we're that we're still doing and we're not actually questioning so the book goes through a whole way of questioning everything so that you can kind of take all the structure out and then put it back in in a way that suits you which might not be nine to five which might not be weekends and weekdays but it could be something else that serves you really well one of the shifts that i had too was when you, when i made the shift from um, employee to uh, to entrepreneur and owning my own businesses was um, as an employee, you do look to that clock at five, 5 PM, or you do look like, well, it's lunchtime. I'm, you know, I've got one hour to lunch. I got 30 minutes to lunch. And then you head out and you, you kind of do that, that sort of thing. Whereas when it, when it's all relying on you and the accountability stops with you, sometimes you just work through lunch or, you know, what, sometimes it's a Thursday and you just want to take your kids to the zoo and you just do it, but you end up working at 10 30 at night till two 30 at night or two 30 in the morning, because that's when your kids are asleep and that's when it works. And so one thing I, I found was you had to shift from it's time-based and you have these kind of time things that you're looking for, but more value creating it. it what, what am I creating and what are the value that I'm adding? And if it takes me 45 minutes, well, I can be done in 45 minutes. I don't have to sit here for four and a half hours yeah. just because uh, there's a desk here and, and, and a chair here. 